Hello and welcome to our instructional series of videos. In this installment, we're going to show you how to replace the battery in the late 2016 and mid 2017 13-inch MacBook Pros. This process involves the use of flammable substances and runs the risk of fire or personal injury if the battery you're removing gets damaged during removal. For your safety, be sure to both read all the information included with your kit and watch this video in its entirety before proceeding. We've gathered all our materials and are working on a soft, static-free work surface. We're now ready to begin. Before we go opening up the MacBook Pro, we first want to temporarily disable the auto boot function. We'll re-enable it later when we're done. To do this, launch terminal and enter sudo nvram auto boot equals percent zero zero, then hit return. You'll be asked for your password. Go ahead and type that in. Note that your cursor won't move as you type in the password. Once you've entered that command, you can now shut the MacBook Pro down and close it. The first thing to do is place the cloth that came with your kit over the keyboard of your MacBook Pro and close the lid to help protect your screen in case of any spillage of the adhesive remover. We can now remove the bottom cover. There are six pentalobe screws on the bottom cover that we'll need to remove. We'll start with the two on the hinge edge as they're slightly longer than the others. You can then remove the four screws along the bottom edge. The cover is held in place by a pair of clips, one on each side. To disengage these clips, use the suction cup from your kit to lift up on one of the front corners, then slide one of the plastic cards underneath the cover and carefully run it along the edge until the clip pops free. Then, do the same thing on the other side. You should now be able to grasp the front edge of the cover and pull it out of the retaining clips holding it on the hinge edge. Just above the battery, there's a plastic cover over the battery board, which will need to be removed. Simply peel it away, taking care not to damage the cable underneath. Next, lift the tab on the cable to reveal the socket underneath. Use your nylon tool to gently lift the latch on the socket, then slide the cable out and move it aside. You can now remove the large Torx T5 screw that holds the power connection closed. Then lift the metal tab up to completely disconnect the battery. Finally, remove these two Torx T5 screws that hold the board in place. Now we can move on to the trackpad connector, which is held in place with two Torx T5 screws and a metal plate, which also need to be removed. You should then be able to lift straight up on the connector to detach it. Then, carefully peel the cable away from the battery. Next, we need to remove the trackpad entirely. Start by removing these eight Torx T5 screws. Then remove these two T5s, which are shorter than the ones that you just removed.
with the computer still upside down, slowly and carefully open the MacBook Pro. The trackpad should stay in place. Be extremely careful to ensure no washers have fallen off, then slide the trackpad cable out through the slot in the chassis. You can then carefully set the trackpad aside. At this point, we're going to be working with adhesive remover, so be sure you're working in a well-ventilated area and use the protective glasses and gloves included in your kit. Start by drawing about a quarter of a milliliter of adhesive remover into the included syringe. Place one of the included plastic cards along the edge of one of the side cells so that it sits slightly underneath. Use the syringe to apply adhesive remover to the card so that it flows down and underneath the battery cell. Let it sit for a minute or two, then carefully work the card under the battery cell, separating the adhesive. You should now be able to lift the side up a little and use the card to add more adhesive remover like before. After letting it set for a minute or two, continue to carefully work the card under the cell, separating the adhesive until it comes free. Then, do the same with the cell on the other side. For the center cell, place the card along the inner edge to the right and apply adhesive remover as before. Work the card underneath the right corner of the battery until it's reasonably loose. At this point, you'll want to make sure the metal tab over the power board is pulled back enough so that the battery board can come free. Continue to separate the adhesive with the card until it comes free and the battery board comes with it. You should now be able to lift the whole battery assembly free. While it is optional, it's usually a good idea to remove the remaining adhesive from the bay so the new battery has a clean surface to adhere to. To do this, simply use a little adhesive remover and use your nylon tool to scrape up the adhesive until you can peel it off the rest of the way. Once you're done, wipe up any extra adhesive remover and let the MacBook sit for about half an hour to ensure everything has evaporated and dried. The first thing we'll want to do is reinstall the trackpad, as it's easier to do so before we install the battery. Before reinstalling, first double check to make sure that the silver washers are all around the posts on the trackpad. If one is missing, check underneath and inside the MacBook Pro as they can fall off easily. Then, simply slide them over their corresponding holes. Once you've double checked the silver washers, open the MacBook Pro and carefully slide the trackpad roughly into place. Feed the cable through the slot in the chassis. Then slowly close the MacBook Pro, making sure the posts on the trackpad line up with the corresponding holes in the chassis. Secure the trackpad in place, starting with the two screws near the edge of the MacBook, which are shorter than the others. Then replace the remaining eight screws. You can now set the new battery into place and remove the plastic from the top. Position the new battery board where the other one was and secure it into place with the two smaller screws.
You can now lift the center cell back and remove the paper backing from the adhesive before setting it back down into place. Then, lift each of the side cells from the outside edge and do the same. Fold the trackpad cable back over across the top of the center cell and press the connector into place. Then, secure it by replacing the retainer cover and two Torx screws. Fold the metal tab back down and replace the large Torx T5 screw to connect the battery power. Then, slide the ribbon cable back into its connector until it's fully seated. Then, lock the connector by moving the lever flat. Finally, peel the backing off the included plastic shield and set it into place over the battery board. There are a series of clips on the hinge edge of the cover that attach to the chassis on the MacBook Pro. Holding the cover as flat as you can, push the cover towards the hinge edge so that these clips engage. Once the hinge edge is flush, push down on the two side edges to re-engage the side clips. We can now replace the six bottom pentalobe screws. Start with the two in the corners on the hinge edge, which are slightly longer than the others. Then, replace the remaining four screws, which are all the same size. Finally, flip the MacBook Pro over and remove the cloth. Now that the battery's been installed, we need to calibrate the power system. First, plug in the USB-C charger and let the battery charge up to 100%. Once it's reached 100%, keep it charging for at least another two hours. However, you can use your computer during this time rather than leaving it off. After that, we'll need to discharge the battery. First, in the Energy Saver Preference pane, make sure all the sliders are set to the right and any power saving measures, like sleeping the hard drive, are turned off. Do this for both the power adapter and the battery settings. Once you've done that, disconnect the power cable and let the battery discharge completely until the computer shuts down. Continue using it even through the low battery warning. Don't do anything particularly heavy. Steady and even usage will result in better power system calibration. Leave it shut down for at least 5 hours to ensure the battery is completely drained. Then, fully charge the computer back up to 100% without unplugging. Once the battery is charged back up, the power management system is properly calibrated. You can now set your energy saver settings back to normal and use your computer as you normally would. All that's left to do is re-enable boot on open. To do this, launch terminal and enter sudo nvram autoboot equals percent 03. 
then hit return. You'll be asked for your password. Enter that and hit return. Boot on Open is now reactivated and your MacBook Pro is ready to use.